This is a quick overview of how to use the labeling and symbology features in ArcMap. It assumes that you already have data incorporated into ArcMap and the layers that you need. You can see here that we've got information that was put together by Diana Sinton at Nightly for the 2006 Tour de France. The routes for the different stages are already on there. And what we'd like to do is, first of all, is um, let's go ahead and create, we have populations for the different tour towns, and what we'd like to do is create some symbols that represent the populations for the different towns. So to see the table, the attribute table associated with this layer, it's visible here, and we'll go ahead and we'll use the 1999 population information to create our map, and we'll use symbology rather than the raw numbers to, to show that. So we'll close the attribute table and you can open the properties for the layer by right clicking on it and selecting properties and we'll select quantities and graduated symbols. Now we need to tell it what attribute we want the graduated symbols to be based on and we want that to be the population from 1999. You can see here that it's going to go ahead and classify those based on natural breaks but you can also change the classification scheme. You can choose quantile, you can use an equal interval, or you can define the intervals yourself. We'll just take the natural breaks for now. If you want to change the color of the graduated symbols, you can do that. We'll go ahead and use green. And now you have graduated symbols that represent the population of the different um, cities for the different stages. And when we apply that, you can see that the cities with the higher population, like Paris, for example, are represented with um, bigger symbols, bigger population symbols. If we wanted to put specific numbers on our map, we could do that as well. Um, we'll go back to, you could right click again and um, click on the layer properties, but you can also double click and bring up the same window. And we want to go over to the labels tab and we'll keep it fairly simple and we're just going to label the features in this layer. We're going to la label them all the same way and ArcMap just needs to know what attribute we want to display on the map. So from the drop down we'll select the 1999 population again, click OK, and then you can see the exact populations appear on the map and provide a little bit more information. Okay, here's one more map. This is a, a map of um, Oklahoma by counties, and you can see the path of some tornadoes that came through in May of 1999. This information uh, I got from a class that I'm taking at uh, Penn State. And um, what I'd like to do is I went back and got some historical information about um, how many tornadoes had hit the different counties. This information was made available from NOAA from 1950 to 2006. So let's go ahead and take a look at that information. Again, this assumes that the information is already in ArcMap. You can see I've got counties and then the, the column here total is the total number of recorded tornadoes that have hit the different counties in that time period, again 1950 to 2006. So if we want to create a choropleth map, we can do that. We'll close the attribute table and we'll double click on the layer and we want to use, we'll click on the symbology tab which is already selected and select graduated colors. Now it needs to know what value we want to use to make those graduated colors and so we'll go ahead and tell it what that is and we'll select total. Again we'll take natural breaks and you can see that once we hit the apply and turn on the layer then you can see the counties that have been hit historically by the most tornadoes are showing up the darkest on the map. So that's um, just a, another variation on how you can use the symbology. If we wanted to show the county names, we could do that just like we did in the last example. We'll open up the layer properties again, select the labels tab, and then we can say label the features in this layer, and we'll select county name as the display attribute. Now we have some more information that makes the map a little bit more useful. Hope this helps.